This is the first time since the Great Depression the currency supply is collapsing. It's collapsed by over a trillion dollars. This is people getting scared and they save up and they pay down debt instead of borrowing more currency into existence each month, they're extinguishing it by paying off their loans. So this is the way a debt-based currency system works. Four minutes. Okay. Four minutes. Okay. You keep on promising to pay more debt uh, than you're borrowing in currency into existence and every month there's a payment due, whether it's the bond, whether it's uh, the uh, uh, loans to you, and as long as the public feels good and borrows more in existence, the economy grows, the banking sector grows, people feel good. But there, sometimes when things get bad, people get scared and they start saving and paying off debt. And then a debt-based currency system can literally implode. It's that simple. It really is that simple. It's made complex by all of these rules and regulations and stuff, and it, it uh, creates a smoke screen so you can't really see what's going on. Maybe that's a little over dramatic. Maybe the dollar will not implode. But I do know this, every 30 to 40 years, the world has an entirely new monetary system. This one is now 39 years old and getting older, and it's developing cracks, it's developing instabilities. This is what you are seeing right now. By the end of this decade, the dollar as it exists today will no longer exist. It'll either be a different dollar or we'll have some sort of world currency, but we will no longer be on the worldwide dollar standard. Uh, this is something called a dead cat bounce. A stock rises, it crashes, and then bounces, and then the crash continues. Uh, there's the NASDAQ. This is a pattern called a dead cat bounce. That crash was a 38% crash. The total crash was 78%. Here's the crash in 1929 that caused the Great Depression. Same dead cat bounce pattern. That crash was uh, 48% instead of 38 like the NASDAQ, the total crash was 90%. This is something called a head and shoulders pattern. A stock rises, then does a pullback. It rises again and sets a new high, and then does a pullback. The next time it rises, though, it can't exceed its previous high. And you get a shoulder, a head, and a shoulder. This is called technical analysis. Technical analysis is only right about 55 or 60 percent of the time, so that means it's wrong 40 to 45 percent of the time. Except this is one of the most reliable patterns that there is. Technicians draw a line across the neckline, they invert the head, and that is the predicted move for a stock or a stock market. This is the Dow Jones again in 1929. Shoulder, head, shoulder, crash. Shoulder, head, shoulder, crash. Shoulder, head, shoulder, crash. It's a very reliable pattern. The total crash, the, the first part of the crash was 48%, the total crash was 98, 90%. Remember, the NASDAQ, the first part was 38, so the total crash was smaller also, it was only 78%. We just went through the biggest crash in history. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average in the United States. There's never been a crash this large. I gave this presentation in St. Petersburg, and so this is several months old, and I was predicting that there would be a head and shoulders pattern developing, and it has. It now looks like uh, a head and shoulders, and it's about to take that plunge, I believe, which would cause a bigger head and shoulders and a further crash. This is the best way of rating the value of stocks, whether they're fair valued, undervalued, overvalued, or in a bubble. It's called P-E ratios. I can't explain it because I don't have time. Professor Robert Schiller of Yale University took the S&P 500 out to the year 1880. What you see... Is um, oil. Yeah. I need to show you oil. I have to show you oil. So what you see is that it goes from overvalued to undervalued to over bubble, undervalued, bubble, undervalued, bubble. It went to fair value and bounced. It's back in a bubble. The stock markets always seek equilibrium. It has to go down. The next best way of measuring a stock's value is dividend yields. 
And this chart is inverted so that bubbles are up and uh, undervalued is down. And you see the same pattern of overvalued, undervalued, overvalued, undervalued. And today, measured by dividend yields, we're still in a bigger bubble than the first 118 years of data. The stock markets have to go down. Uh, this is the S&P 500 in the United States, the British stock market, the German stock market, and you see they all track each other except Singapore used to trade differently. The Nikkei, Japan, used to trade differently. It, it wouldn't always go up when the US stock, stock market was going up. It would trade in opposite directions. But in about the year 2000, they all started trading the same. Brazil just started trading with the US in the same direction in uh, 2008. And guess what? So did Russia. Wherever the US goes, you go. And so does the rest of the world. So we all went up. And we're all going down, I believe, because the US stock markets are going down. This shows deflation. This is a dead cat bounce pattern on soybeans. This is wheat. Dead cat bounce, shoulder, head, shoulder, down. This is corn. Dead cat bounce, shoulder, head, shoulder. I believe it's going down. If the currency supply was not collapsing, I'd say that this could be wrong. But I say that there's no chance that this can be wrong because the currency supply is also contracting and the stock markets are in a bubble. Well, look at this one, crude oil. See some patterns here? Shoulder, head, shoulder. I believe it's going down. I believe it's going down big. You may see $10 a barrel crude oil. This is a tonnage of Russian oil exports. So that's the volume. It leveled out back in 2004. You're having trouble increasing your volume, so you can't increase your income by pumping more oil. It's not going to happen. This is crude oil prices, and this is the value of the tonnage of oil times the price. So that's Russia's income. Do you see any patterns here? Do you see shoulder, head, shoulder? Do you see a dead cat bounce pattern? I do. This is the first, uh, oh, this is the first ruble. Ruble goes back 500 years. It was devalued 10,000 to 1, then 100 to 1, then 50,000 to 1, then 10 to 1, 10 to 1, and 1,000 to 1. Well, we are on the seventh ruble right now. The total devaluation, the ruble has been devalued five quadrillion times. This is wealth being transferred from the population to the government. The world has a new monetary system every 30 to 40 years, the classical gold standard, where every unit of currency in existence, every dollar, every British pound, and so on, was backed by an equivalent amount of gold at, their, at the treasury. Then World War I came along. I'm sorry, come on. You can... I'm done in two seconds. I'm done in five, 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, then the gold exchange standard. Then the Bretton Woods system where all currencies on the planet were backed by the US dollar with the exception of just a few. But almost all currencies were backed by the US dollar and the dollar was pegged to gold at $35 an ounce and foreign central banks could come to the Federal Reserve and change those dollars for gold at $35 an ounce, effectively pegging every currency on earth to gold through the US dollar. 1971 comes along and basically we had printed too many dollars, receipts for gold. We didn't have enough gold to back it up. Nixon takes us off of the gold standard. And on that day, August 15th, 1971, all the world's currencies became pieces of paper with numbers on them and nothing more. It's called a fiat currency. It has no intrinsic value. So 30 to 40 years, 30 years, 28 years, 39 years plus, what's next? The ruble has a crisis every now and then. Every currency on, the, on earth has. Why do you think the dollar is so stable? Why do you think the dollar isn't susceptible to a major currency crisis? I believe it is. I believe we're going on a new currency crisis. It's going to happen. We're going on a new monetary system. It's going to happen in this decade. There's the stock market. There's the performance of gold. Uh, I'm going to just skip through this because I don't have the time. I'm sorry. Uh, this is probably the most important thing. I wish I could teach it to you, but I can't. Mr. So, I think okay. Question. Okay. Uh, yes. 
Я предлагаю сейчас закончить. Если можно. You should finish. Okay, I'm done. That's it. Uh, I had a movie for you. Sorry you couldn't see it. Our whole monetary system borrows prosperity from the future so that we can spend it today. When we do a bailout, we're borrowing more prosperity out of the future just to prop up these zombie companies and zombie banks. And what that does is all that prosperity is owed back, just like our entire currency supply of the planet. It is all owed back plus interest. That means our prosperity is owed back plus interest. <laughs> yeah, it felt, it was fun to kick some ass. <laughs>